What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm going to be bringing you guys a deck that I think I'm actually going to be playing for this format. I think it's one of the most fun decks I've played in a very, very long time. If you guys know me, if you guys have been viewers of the channel for a while, you, you know that I like to do OTK versions of pretty much every deck. So whether it's OTK Dino, OTK Hero, OTK Crusadia, like that's what we do here on the channel. I love these OTK decks. And for the first time in a long time, it's actually meta, it's tier one. I wouldn't say tier zero, but it's definitely tier one. It's a very, very good deck. And of course the deck that I'm talking about is Tenpai, right? So Tenpai is a deck that uh, just recently came out. This deck is super, super fun. There's so many variants. You can do hand trap versions, you can do board breaker versions. And it's uh, so good because if the format changes to where board breakers are better, you just play board breakers. If it changes to where hand traps are better, you play hand traps, right? So that's what I really like about this deck. The versatility is really, really nice. So with that being said, make sure to like and subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content like this one. And let's get right into the deck profile. So first things first is three of the Pydra. Pydra is the most important card in the deck. This card is absolutely insane on normal summon or in the battle phase. So keep in mind, they kind of all have similar effects where it's like on normal summon or in when it attacks, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. But essentially it sets or it adds to hand or sets a, uh, a Sangen spell. So it's like this or the field spell kind of more or less. Um, that's really important because it helps you play around Droll as well because you can set the cards directly. So keep in mind when you do set something like this though, it can't be activated because it's a quick play, right? But just something to keep in mind, it can set it so you can play around cards like Droll or you can just add it to hand. But it being able to set it is actually very important because I'm going to be showing you guys a combo at the end of this video where that, that, that comes up, right? Setting it specifically, right? So three Pydra, uh, three of the Chandra. Chandra is a card that special summon itself when you control a fire dragon. So it's an extender. It's also the tuner, which is really, really important in the main deck. So that's really important in that sense. Oh, and they also all have like separate effects. I'll just talk about this first. Two Fadra. The reason we're not maxing out on this guy is because this card doesn't actually extend a lot of your plays. It gets a monster back from your graveyard. So it's really good to summon after you kind of set these guys up. But initially you don't want to start with this. So that's why we're only playing two of this. Now, essentially, the other thing that's really cool about these uh, cards is because it's a battle phase deck, they all have separate effects where essentially it'll protect you from, I think, battle damage. And then Fodra protects you from being destroyed by battle. So it's really nice. So like even if you have to attack into something bigger, your monsters won't be destroyed by battle. And then if you have Pydra on board, you won't take damage either. So that's really nice. So it's really good to have all, all these. These are really, really important to have. And then to continue on with the Tempai cards, we're playing uh, three of the summoning, uh, one terraforming, of course. Summoning is so important. This card is absolutely insane. We all talk about how Misk is that one, right? Because Misk is so broken in Dino. This is just better than Misk. During your main phase, you add a fire dragon monster to your hand, but then the other effect is your opponent can't, or all your fire dragons, I should say, are unaffected by your opponent's cards. So crazy. Main phase, unaffected. So your opponent has to react in the battle phase, which is really nice. And then of course, uh, we are also playing the one uh, Dragon Ravine. So this field spell in theory could be anything. So I kind of want to talk about that for just a minute because I like Dragon Ravine because you guys are going to see something in the deck that I don't feel like everyone is playing, but I think is a really cool extender. But this could, in theory, like I've seen Necro Valley. I personally didn't like Necro Valley because the Synchro summoned themselves back and Necro Valley kind of stops that. I've seen Chicken Game, which I didn't like. The one that's really, really good is Summon Breaker, I believe it's called. I couldn't find that card, unfortunately, but if you do have a Summon Breaker, that could be a really good card as well because essentially it's, I think it's during the main phase, if your opponent summons a third time, it goes straight to the end phase. So it's kind of like a floodgate that the Zek can play, which is kind of insane when you're forced to go first. The way it works is if you summon three times in your main phase one, it skips it over. So you could like summon one time in main phase one and then just keep doing the rest of your stuff in main phase two. Oh, but, but then you don't, but then the point is, if you're going first, that wait, okay, that doesn't sound great, but at least you don't, you live a turn, like, cause you don't die in the battle phase, right? I don't know. Yeah, so as long as you don't die in the battle phase, you're good. So you can play Summon Breaker, that card is still seemingly fine. There's another option. There's a new card that just came out in lead. Anyways, any other field spell is really good. I like playing the extra field spell. This one you'll see why is important later. So let's continue on with the profile, but I'm gonna show you guys why Dragon Ravine is uh, really important. But then of course you're also playing three uh, Kaiman. Uh, so that's pretty much in for it for the engine. There are some cards now that are not technically engine, but I, I consider them really, really important. And I'm gonna show you guys what, what those are right now. For you guys who don't know, this card is also really good. You can get uh, uh, the effects in the battle phase and then maybe is really, really powerful. So this card's really good. But um, one Magnum move. All dragons, Magna is really, really good because it searches all of this for follow up, which is really, really nice. So it's a really cool hand trap for you. I like playing the one blaster. The reason I actually like playing the one blaster is because it's target removal for you. And I think that's really important because let's just say you open a hand, something like this, like Fadra, this and a Chandra, let's just say, right? And you're going second. You can use the blaster effect, pitch these two. So then you can, or sorry, you don't pitch the Fadra, you pitch, you pitch the Chandra, you pitch these two, pop a card. And then because something's set up in the graveyard now, 
This card typically doesn't do anything on its own, but because you have some sort of setup, now you can normal summon this, get this back, and then you can continue your combos from there. So that's why I personally like playing the Buster still, just because it is uh, removal. It's a big body as well, which is really nice because it helps you push for game. And then last card that I'm playing, and this is why Dragon Ravine is really cool, is because you can send something like the Strudo, which is absolutely insane. This is a level three body that you can use uh, because, well, it depends on what the level that you're using, but it's an extender for you, which is really nice. And it kind of forces that extra level of extension um, that this deck has so where even if your opponent has some sort of disruptions and you still have this you can continue on playing So that's why I like the Distrudo it gets you access to your level 7 synchros really really nice in that sense, right? So that's why I'm playing that and then that's why the Dragon Ravine is so good as well So this also if you open this you can pitch it off Dragon Ravine send a blaster for example, right? You can pitch it off Dragon Ravine send one of these guys get your Fodger alive So that's why I think Dragon Ravine is really cool It's just again one of those extension pieces more so than a uh, floodgate piece And the reason I'm doing it that way is because I feel like you guys are gonna see the rest of the deck there's uh, so many anti-meta cards that the extender is really, really important. Then we're just playing three Prosperity. This deck can OTK through Prosperity, so yeah, Prosperity is absolutely insane. You can't not play Prosperity. Uh, you can play Desires. I've seen some people play Desires, but I think Prosperity just makes more sense. Searching for the card that you actually need is just way more important. And then we're playing a ton of Hand Traps and Board Breakers. Now, this is not a Hand Trap, but I personally really like three Fenrir in the main deck. The reason why I like Fenrir in the main deck is, uh, there's a couple of reasons, but one, Typically, this deck does require setup, right? Like, I know people like to show off the combos where it's like, oh, just one Pydra is like 18k damage or something like that. Like, that's not necessarily true because although technically it, the combo can do something like that, if your opponent has bodies on the board, that doesn't do it, right? You have to do more things. Now, you can still OTK even with that scenario, but this card is just relatively really powerful because what you're going to be doing is uh, you just special summon this to start your turn. Nothing locks you into anything, right? You special summon this to start your turn, and then uh, you're gonna be able to search a second one. Now, searching a second one is really good because once you search a second one, your summoning actually sometimes needs a card to pitch. So it's gonna get you that extra card that you're gonna need to pitch off of your summoning. And so that's why I think this card is really good because not only is it a body for you going second, it can banish a card your opponent controls in the battle phase. So let's say you go into battle phase. Let's say you have like these two, right? You go into battle phase, you attack with this, banish something, destroy something. This is clearing up your opponent's board for then these to go off, right? So I really like Fenrir in the I think it makes so much sense um, and that's why this could be a hand trap in theory I'm actually not playing Nibiru I'll talk about that but the reason I'm not playing Nibiru is because I'm playing this this could be Nibiru in theory but again I just think this card just makes so much sense in this deck then we're playing three Ash playing three Ogre Ogre I think is really good in the mirror match as well you need to be able to win in the mirror match and this card is absolutely insane in the mirror match so three Ogre three Imperm playing three Droplet Droplet is absolutely insane in this format so I like the Droplet Droplet also pitching your um you know your Destrudo or your blaster is really really good so three droplet one heart piece for the back row two lightning storm also for back row uh but in theory it could be front row as well and then lastly one called by the grave called by the grave also could be another card board breaker whatever you want it to be i just i just really like this card so that's it for that but i want to talk about this for a second so you see how i'm playing like ogre fenrir and stuff like that like you know the really cool thing about this deck and i, I don't want to confuse you guys but the really cool thing about this deck is in theory this hand traps could be Nib, Thaler, Mourner. Like you can play all of these, right? No, these are not part of the deck profile. So if anyone's looking at it and be like, why are you playing so many cards? I'm not playing these cards, but I'm just showing you guys. These are different options that you guys can be playing. I'm not playing Nibiru just because I'm playing the Fenrir and Nibiru Fenrir doesn't really make sense. But Nibiru is really powerful in this format. Mourner is really good. Valor is really good. Valor, the reason I'm opting not to play it is because in the mirror match, it's not good because it only works in main phase one. And if your opponent just does everything in battle phase anyway, it's not that great. But in general, all these different hand traps, depending on the format, you just side them in, um, or you don't side them in, you swap them, I should say, and then it can become really powerful, right? So that's the cool thing I like about this deck is so many different options, so many different ways to play it. But that's it for the main deck. I think I'm actually on 41 cards in the main deck. I'm not on 40, I'm on 41. And um, let's move on to the extra deck. Now, I'm gonna give you guys a quick disclaimer. I am not playing the link package, not because I don't want to, because I don't own it. Yeah, it's... Uh, Play the link package if you have it, but I have something else that you guys can play in here as well. I'm going to show you this combo because it's, it's actually really, really cool. But the link package, this is all we're playing. The seals, the SP, and the striker. Striker into SP is, of course, really strong. And then seals is very important for when you're going first. So that's why we're playing these ones. Now, the for anyone who doesn't know what the link package is, it's essentially a Promethean Princess, a Pyro Phoenix, the Salomon Great Card, a Zelantis, which I have Zelantis and I have... Princess actually funny enough, but I didn't have a five power phoenix. So I'm not playing that engine at all. So yeah, just play these three. That's all you need for now. Hida as well. You can play Hida, Amblo Whale as well. All the fire extra that cards essentially you can be playing, but I'm not playing them just because I don't have the full package. So it doesn't make sense to play them. Disclaimer, just so you guys know. But uh, of course, then we're playing the, the standard uh, two of the Biden Dragon, 
one of the level 10 guy. These are really powerful cards as well, really, really nice. You gotta play two of this guy because one of your combos, you need one of him at least, and then he helps you OTK, right? They all help you OTK, so it's really nice. So these guys, then of course the one uh, Trident Dragion. This card is really, really good as well. I wish it wasn't so expensive, but it's a, it's a really good card. You don't actually make this all the time, but it helps you OTK through Prosperity, so it's really nice in that sense. One Black Rose. Black Rose is really cool because if you guys don't know, this is a Fire Dragon. This guy over here is really good in the battle phase as well. Meteor Burst is really, really cool. So I like making this. A lot of your combos, you're gonna be making this guy because it, it'll stop everything in the battle phase. So essentially the field spell will stop everything in the main phase, it'll stop everything in the battle phase, which is really nice. One Cobalt, this is just really good to um, pop cards your opponent controls. This in theory could be anything else, right? The, the, it could be, you know, whether it's a Black Rose Moonlight, I'm not playing Moonlight in here, but it could be a Black Rose Moonlight. Another card it could be is Dispatter actually, the level 10. Uh, the reason we're not doing the Dispatter stuff is, uh, you know, it's cool, it just doesn't come up enough. Honestly, I think the sevens are more important than the tens and you don't really want to focus or hard focus on going into tens other than these two guys because this pattern is not really going to help you necessarily OTK. So that's why I think the seven just makes more sense. Um, and either way, this and this pattern are not fire dragons. So it's not like that's going to make that much of a difference either, right? So that's really good, cool. One Ancient Fairy. Ancient Fairy is really, really good as well because um, getting to your field spell is really important. And then on top of that, there's a combo where this is actually absolutely insane. So I wanna show you guys that combo. But speaking of that combo, because I don't have the link package, we're actually playing a little synchro package, a Zulkin package. So we're playing Zulkin, Crystal Wing, we're playing a Black Wing Assault Dragon and a Black Wing Dragon. Now I know this looks funny and these four cards can be swapped out for the link package essentially, but those four cards are really good for a really powerful first turn board that I'm gonna show you guys in the combo later. But uh, I feel like I'm talking a lot, so let me show you guys that combo when I get into it. Let me show you guys the side deck real quick. Side deck is always gonna be up to personal preference. I say this in every video. I love this card. I just like Kaiju S cards. That's a personal preference of mine. Again, you don't have to play it. Some people do, some people don't. I really like it, I just like Kaiju cards. We're playing two of the Ghost Bell. This is really good into uh, the fire matchup, so that's why I'm playing the Ghost Bell. I was actually gonna play three, but I decided to play this as a, as another card here. So Hieratic Seals into this when you're forced to go first is really good into the Light Swarm matchups. It's really good into the Despia, like the Branded matchups as well. So it kind of shuts those out and those are decks are, that are pretty popular right now, right? So Drago is really cool. And you can keep it on the field because uh, all your cards are dragons. So all you have to do is reveal a dragon in your hand to keep it on the field and you're not summoning light or darks anyway. So uh, this card is really, really powerful. And then of course, for going first. So these are for going like, uh, well, this is technically for going first, but these are going for going second. For going first though, we side these in. Shifter, Heat Wave, D Barrier. Heat Wave is the most broken card in the game. If I'm going first and I activate Heat Wave and I see everything else in my hand, I don't care. I'm activating Heat Wave and passing because that's all you're gonna need to do to win the game. Heat Wave is absolutely insane. Technically, if you open these two in tandem, you can go Heat Wave, Chain Link, Shifter. Then you're shutting out the Graveyard as well, so they can't even set up for the next turn. So they're just so these are just so broken. You have to be playing these cards. I really like this card as well. I wouldn't say you have to be playing. I really like it. And then these cards again, you can change up based off of the meta. But again, always gonna be a skeleton, right, for you guys to use for your decks, you don't have to follow the exact side deck. Side deck's always up to personal preference. Now, I wanna show you guys a quick combo because I wanna show you guys what the uh, Blackwing stuff does, okay? So let's just say, it doesn't really matter what the last card is, okay? You just need a card to pitch, right? So let's say these these three are in your hand. Like you open a hand similar to this one, right? Th this is gonna be really cool. This could be anything, of course, like I said, but I'm just gonna do Call by the Grave just for now. But this is really, really good because I'll, I'll show you how first turn you can make actually a really, really powerful board. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna summon your Pydra and then you're gonna activate your Pydra effect and you're gonna set your summoning, right? You're just gonna activate your summoning, so set it, so activate it. Activate this effect, you essentially search a card and then discard a card, right? So you'll search your Fadra over here, you search Fadra, you pitch the Call by the Grave. Let's just say the Graveyard's here, right? So you pitch the Call by the Grave. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna use the Chandra effect to special summon itself, because it's in your hand. Um, this could also technically be done if you open these two, by the way, because then you just search the missing dragon, so it doesn't really matter which one you search. Uh, you go this, you're gonna synchro these two off together, and you're gonna summon your Ancient Fairy Dragon, okay? So Ancient Fairy Dragon now effect, what you can do is you can special summon your Fadra, okay, from your hand, and then you can use the Fadra effect to special summon um, your Chandra back, okay? So you're summoning these two. Do I have a field center? I don't have a field center, but I'll just show you guys like here. Let's just say it's like this, okay? Just for you guys to use. Okay, so you're summoning this guy back with your Fadra. Uh, now what you can do is, uh, you can use the Ancient Fairy Dragon effect. It doesn't matter if you use it now or not. You just pop this, and then you get to search for the other field spell. Again, depending on whatever field spell you choose to play, I'm just playing Dragon Ravine. This is gonna help you extend further, but we're just gonna assume that we have no other cards in our hand, right? So we're gonna have Dragon Ravine in our hand. Then what you can do is you can uh, synchro these two together. So your three and your four into your Biden Dragon. So you're gonna summon Biden Dragon over here. Okay, keep in mind, this is your hand, this is your field right now, okay? 
Then Binding Dragons, you're gonna activate its effect. Doesn't really matter what you summon back. Let's just say you summon back your Pyjo. It doesn't really matter what you summon back. That's not gonna be that important. What you're gonna do now is you're gonna use your Ancient Fairy Dragon and your Binding Dragon. Keep in mind, Binding is a tuner, right? So you're gonna use these two to make your Zolkin, okay? Uh, now what you can do is you can set the Dragon Ravine that you search, right? Set the Field Spell, which is gonna trigger Zolkin, and you're gonna be able to summon your Black Wing Dragon. Now what you're gonna do is your Black Wing Dragon and your Pyjo over here. You're gonna use these two. You're gonna link them off into your heavenly seals. What you can do now is because you have the black wing dragon in your graveyard, as well as the bident dragon in your graveyard, you can actually banish these two cards. So let's say you banish them to summon your black wing uh, assault dragon. Okay, now this card is absolutely insane because what this card is gonna let you do, don't summon it into the animal zone by the way. Uh, but what this card is gonna let you do is essentially every time your active opponent activates a card, they're gonna burn them for 700, right? Which doesn't sound crazy. First of all, in time, it's absolutely insane. So important to make this in time, um, but it's just really good in general because you're gonna be setting up this board. Now you're gonna pass. Now it doesn't look crazy, right? Now in theory, of course, if you have more cards, you go drive this, you pitch it, you do a bunch of other things, right? But let's just say you're not doing any of that. So on your opponent's turn, you're gonna do something, whatever, you use your Hieratic Seals, you bounce a card your opponent controls. Now, when you activate your Hieratic Seals effect, essentially you're gonna be able to summon another Pydra from your deck. So you summon Pydra, and then on summon, Pydra is gonna trigger, and then you're gonna be able to set your Kaimi. Now, when you set a card, Zolkin is gonna trigger again, and because Zolkin triggers again, you can actually summon your Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. So you're ending on a bounce, essentially a bounce, plus follow up with your Kaiman, plus a negate with Crystal Wing, plus a burn every time your opponent activates a card. So this is kind of like your first turn combo that you guys can end up doing. It's just a two card combo essentially or two and a half card combo that ends on some pretty powerful cards. Again, ideally you don't want to go first anyways with this deck, but I want to show you guys a combo like this one because it's better than not having anything to kind of go with. On your follow up turn, you have this for follow up, you can OTK them, right? So it's really cool because going first, you actually have something that you guys can set up. And then once you set up this board, of course, again, you never want to go first with this deck. And if you have Heat Wave, you're never going to do this combo anyways. But if you don't have Heat Wave, you don't have a board wipe, uh, let's say you have a D barrier or you have, you know, another going, good going first card, you can set up this exact same combo, set that D barrier, set the droplet as well. Keep in mind, Zolkin is dead now, right? So if you have a droplet, you set the droplet and then you can droplet the Zolkin away and then use it and there's a game negate too. So there's just so many different things you can do. And that's why I really, really like this deck. Going second, of course, it's probably one of the best going second decks, if not the best going second deck of all time. But going first, it has these really cool combos. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. I know this was a longer video, but I really wanted to show you guys the combo as well. I think this combo is really cool. And um, that's all I gotta say. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys wanna see more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. I appreciate every single one of you. Shout out Alpha for being the best cameraman on YouTube. And with that, thank you, and I know. Peace.